think of Sony like an industrial bakehouse or an industrial kitchen where you can bring your secret ingredients, you can use some of their basic ingredients, you can use their ovens, but you will build something to your recipe. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. Today, I wanna to talk about sensory perception. The perception of senses and the perception of how a sensor manufacturing company works. How do they work? Well, here we are at a little bit of a crossroad. It's been quite often shared in my comments that Sony have a monopoly on creating sensors for the photographic world. It's a pretty interesting thing. If you are a mass producer of sensors for digital cameras all over the world, how do you run that business? How do you run that business when you're in competition? One of the biggest sensor manufacturers in the world, of course, is Sony. And they produce sensors for, well, just about everybody. Apple, Fuji, Nikon, DJI, Leica, probably Hasselblad. The list goes on and on. If you're Sony and you're making sensors for this long, long list of companies. Of course, Sony also manufacture their own cameras. They've been doing video cameras forever and digital cameras for a pretty long time as well. They purchased Konica Minolta quite some time ago. I think it was around 2006, 2007. And from there, they started to build their DSLR camera system. Of course, their most famous cameras are, of course, the Alphas. And of course, the Alphas, they have been ridiculously successful, starting with the Sony A7 and the Sony A7R in 2013. This is now the 10 year anniversary of Sony getting into mirrorless and being very successful at it. So not only were they making sensors for lots of leading camera manufacturers, but now they were in the business of doing it for themselves. And isn't this some sort of conflict of interest? And how do you manage it? How is it a company the size of Sony, a multi-billion dollar company, how is it that they handle the conflict of interest between their needs as a camera manufacturer and the needs of all of these other companies that we've talked about? Apple themselves needing hundreds of millions of sensors every year. I mean, it's kind of pretty ridiculous, isn't it? And from Tim Cook, the boss at Apple, we've been partnering with Sony for over a decade to create the world's leading camera sensors for iPhone. Now we do know that Apple use Sony sensors, but what we don't know is who else uses Sony sensors. There could be so many different companies, perhaps they're security companies, drone companies, military companies, car companies. But we can see with the iPhone alone that almost a billion sensors are bought every year. And if you look at how that reflects upon the interchangeable lens camera market, you can see that all of those camera companies are a drop in the ocean compared to simply Apple alone. And thus the notion that Sony's camera division has any sway in what goes on in this area, well, it's simply that. It's simply a notion. Where the bucks are, well, the bucks are elsewhere. And Sony does have their competitors. For example, Tesla uses Samsung. How do you make sure there isn't a conflict of interest? Well, one way you can do it is ensuring that your camera division and your sensor fabrication division are actually separate. They're separate businesses that don't really share internal information. Now, if you're selling hundreds of millions of sensors to just Apple every year, then you've got to make sure as a customer that you keep their secrets safe, even if that someone else is kind of your own company. It's a problem. At the end of the day, selling to Hasselblad, Leica, Fuji, Nikon, Apple is going to be far, far larger than the business of just selling to your own mirrorless division. With things like the guarantee of that division being around forever, not necessarily guaranteed. 
Whereas all of those other businesses, some of them are gonna survive. And in reality, most of them are gonna survive. The separation between divisions, super critical, super important. One of the most important parts of this story. But I do think there is another super duper important part. How are sensors made? And I don't mean how are they fabricated. I mean, how does that secret recipe come about? The secret recipe, which is your sensor, their sensor, a Leica sensor. How is it different to a phase one sensor? I recently watched phase one launch their BSI, medium format, backs. And in that, they talked about the fact that they co-developed the sensor with Sony, but that the color layer the color layer on the top was absolutely their own creation, had nothing to do with Sony. This is absolutely the same for all manufacturers. We know that Fuji has their own special secret sauce that they put on the top of a sensor. Nikon do the same, everybody else does the same. Sensors are made up of layers, wafers, wiring, silicon, and then the color filter that sits on top. And this is absolutely critical. Just that color layer alone can change things significantly between manufacturers, but there's more to it. The process of making state-of-the-art sensors is years, years in the design, years in the R&D, years in the testing, and think of it like baking the perfect souffle, the perfect apple pie. You don't just do it once. You've got all of your ingredients and you try out a whole lot of different ways to get there. A little bit more cinnamon, a little bit more apple. The apple is a little bit more shredded. Do we leave the skin on the apple? What sort of pastry do we use? Is it fluffy or is it a shorter sort of pastry? Is there more sugar, less sugar? Do we cook it for longer and make it crisper? Do we caramelize things some more or not? And that's just a complicated apple pie. Imagine when you're making state-of-the-art sensors, all the technology that you can bring to bear and how many iterations there are, and that is where the secret lies. Think of Sony like an industrial bakehouse or an industrial kitchen where you can bring your secret ingredients, you can use some of their base ingredients, you can use their ovens, but you will build something to your recipe. And that is what Sony is. There are all sorts of needs, all sorts of companies bringing their needs to Sony's bakehouse to have their goods baked. Now, Sony is not the only sensor manufacturer in the world. Let's talk about that for just a second. You see, there have been other companies in the market. For example, Tower Jazz, which is to the best of my understanding, currently in the process of being purchased by Intel. Now, if you do some deep diving on the internet, you can find that Tower Jazz has probably manufactured some sensors for camera companies, including Nikon. And you can see in an annual report that they use the Z50, and I think it's the D3200, as examples of their camera division, their sensor division, making sensors for the camera world. So is it possible by the fact that two Nikon cameras, for example, are in this annual report, the Tower Jazz has been making sensors for Nikon? It certainly appears that way. Tower are openly talking about the fact that they are making sensors for cameras and for movie cameras. Also, that annual report includes an image of an ARRI cinema camera. It's pretty clear that Sony don't have a monopoly in this market. I think we can say that. And of course, we also know that Canon produce all, if not almost all, of their sensors. But back to where it was before, the Sony bakery. The sensors that Sony do bake come in from all directions. Apple, Leica, Hasselblad, Fuji, Nikon, DJI, and many, many more. The automotive industry, I suspect, is also one of their largest customers. All of these OEMs are bringing their specifications in and they're r and they're sampling, they're putting everything together. It's cool, right? It's great. And they're gonna use the Sony Bakehouse. 
And thus, Sony has its fabrication process. You can come in and use their kitchen, their ovens, their basic constituents, flour, some of their special secret sauces and ingredients. Sure, but you're bringing your recipe. It's your recipe that you've spent a very long time thinking about and designing. But let's say you're worried. You really don't want Sony to know what you're up to. Like, you really don't. So how do you solve that? Well, one way which would be super easy to do it, and let's think about the fact that state-of-the-art sensors are probably something like three to five years, might be less sometimes, might be more sometimes, in the making. And if that's the case, over that period of time, when you're working with the latest technology that Sony has to offer, you're gonna iterate. You're gonna try variations. You're gonna say, Sony, can we have variations A through to F? We're gonna do all of our algorithmic stuff and we're gonna look at the market. And you know, maybe it's a 20 megapixel sensor. Maybe they have a 24. Maybe they have a BSI. Maybe they've got stack. More memory on the sensor, less memory on the sensor. I mean, there's just so many options and permutations today of how you can change your sensor. And thus, if you're Sony and you're trying to second guess what your customer is doing in another division because you make mirrorless 35mm cameras and let's say they do as well, and you say to the boss of Sony sensors, well, what are they working on? And the boss is going to say, well, we've currently iterated over the last year 10 different sensors. And we know because they've booked the fabrication time in three years time, we have no idea which of those 10 sensors they're gonna use. We just have no idea. So the harsh reality is here, company A can ensure that Sony has no idea which way they are gonna go by simply iterating through the R&D process. A lot of the process is out of Sony's hands and Sony can't then go to market with a camera when their competitors are iterating, whether it's two, three, five, or 10 different sensors through the cycle of that generation. Sony is simply not gonna know which horse to back. Let's say, for example, they think it's going to be a 33 megapixel backside illuminated stack sensor. This company might have also chosen a 20 megapixel stacked BSI and a 60 megapixel BSI stack sensor. They could have chosen any or all of these sensors, thus completely confusing Sony as to what they'll actually do. And thus, because Sony doesn't know which one will be chosen in three years time to go into fabrication, they simply can't be copied. And this notion that Sony is controlling everything, it really doesn't make sense. And a great example of this is the Fuji X-H2S. It's the first camera in the market to have a stacked BSI sensor in APS-C. And nobody else has done that. Sony could do it, but they haven't done that. Why does that happen? It would make sense for them to make a camera like that. There are customers screaming for a camera like that. I don't think it's all as straightforward as some might like to think. And it really isn't in Sony's best interests to betray all of their other customers for the sake of essentially just one more customer which is Sony's camera division. They're just not gonna do that. They're two separate entities. I'd love to know what you think about this theory of mine. Please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. It's been so good to see you and I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share and please like. All right, bye for now.